You're excited about all the amazing things to do in New York City, but you need to be able to get from one place to another. In New York, there are many ways to get around, including car, subway, bus, ferry, and a good old walking. I'm Halva, and today I'm breaking down these options so that you know what mode of transportation is best for you based on where you're going, how fast you want to get there, and how much money you will spend in the process. If this is the kind of information you're looking for, go ahead and hit that like button. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe and turn on notifications for this channel. Like most cities in the United States, one way to get around New York is by car. Taxes are an iconic symbol of New York City, but to actually ride one can get pretty costly pretty fast. So I'd encourage you to take a short ride in one just for the fun of it or to watch my video to get a feel for the experience. And also how fast all the extra fees can add up. Also, I left my phone in a taxi, one of the freakier things I've done in New York. So if you want a little drama, this video is something you won't want to miss. Taxis aren't the only cars in New York City. I decide what demands they would get on. Actually, look here. And on a more serious note, unfortunately, with apps like Uber and Lyft, and then the lockdown to the pandemic, there are far fewer taxis than there used to be. But Uber and Lyft are viable options, and practically speaking, I prefer them over taxis because it's nice to know upfront what the cost will be. I also especially like to take car services to and from the airport, and in most situations, I recommend that for other travelers too. You don't need to be figuring out the subway on a long, greasy route while also hauling luggage behind you too. Take it from someone who has learned this the hard way, and unfortunately, drag your family through this to trimming curve too. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Are you considering renting a car to drive yourself around New York City? Don't do it. Seriously, just no. Why? First of all, the cost. That is not of the rental itself, which costs more than in other cities. The cost of gas here, the cost of parking. But even if money is not an item to you, being a driver in the city is highly inconvenient. Think about finding places to legally park, finding gas stations. There are literally just five gas stations. It's out of 95th Street in Manhattan. Dealing with New York City drivers, I haven't tried renting a car and I have no desire to. Other transportation options are more efficient, hassle-free in your city, so follow the lead of the locals on this one. One exception, if you're planning to spend a majority of your time in the outer boroughs, meaning outside of Manhattan, renting a car might be an option. New York City public transportation can be intimidating for some people, so I'm going to give you some tools that will hopefully ease your stress as you gallivant the greatest city in the world. When it comes to calculating routes, I really like Google Maps. Apple Maps works too, but I just really prefer Google Maps for New York City transportation. Though it's not perfect because it pushes up with the slight unpredictability of the New York City subway schedule, I like the Google Maps updates departure times when subways are early or late. It also just tells you which lines are running so you don't have to try to keep up with the schedule. For example, the Z train only runs during weekday morning, but with Google Maps, who even cares? Another app I really like is the New York City subway app. I like being able to look at the map and see the path where various lines run. I find myself opening this one a lot when I am curious because the New York City subway system just intrigues me. My OTA is a popular choice among locals because with the lack of precision of the public transportation system, the app gives you current information on changes to the subway schedule, such as giving a station, the ability to track buses in real time, which can help you determine whether your bus has been detoured and is it coming to your bus stop at all, or if it's just running late due to some unspecified traffic. Because it's so handy, I wanted to let you know about it, even though I honestly haven't found myself using it much, which means it's certainly far from essential when navigating the city. The New York City subway is so famous and so convenient. I love it, but I learned a lot about how to navigate it through making mistakes. So to save you from a few mistakes, I put together information and pro tips to help you out. First of all, there are seven numbered routes, 15 letter routes, and three shell services. Aside from the shell services, routes are categorized as local and express, which typically differentiates the subway lines based on how many stops they make. Local routes have more stops, which may help you arrive closer to your final destination, whereas express routes make fewer stops, getting you through the city faster. By and large, the subway system doesn't really run east-west in Manhattan, but it's still really helpful for getting around. That said, with the other blues, I find that the subway does a better job connecting them to Manhattan than kind of through Manhattan than actually getting around the boroughs themselves. The bus system is pretty useful for the other boroughs, and I've got content about that too. Public transportation in New York City isn't free, and jumping to tourist styles in the subway station is really not cool. So here's a breakdown of what you can expect to pay for subways and buses here in New York City. You can load these onto an iconic metro card, which I currently use, but know that the metro card will be phased out by 2024, and the more up and coming option is the Omni contactless payment system with a smartphone. A pay for ride card can be swiped multiple times in a row, so this can be shared among multiple people. But if you have an unlimited pass, note that when you swipe it, there's a timer before you'll be able to use it again. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but don't try to use this as a way to get everyone in your party to some way for a cheaper amount because it won't work. In fact, a couple of times when I've gone into the wrong side of a subway station, I've had to explain to the person working the booth to let me in, and that's what you'll have to do too if you make a mistake, because your unlimited pass is not usable for a few minutes. 
Once you've figured out which subway you're going to take, pay attention to the signs at the entrances of the station. If it's a local subway line, which means that it makes money stops, you'll want to make sure that you find the correct entrance with the subway going in the right direction, such as downtown or uptown. If you're taking an express subway line, it means that you'll get to your destination faster because it skips many of the stops. The entrance shouldn't be a big deal and the direction probably won't be listed at all because both directions are accessible from that entrance. Now, the subway is not a clean place and don't be surprised if you spot rats in the tracks while you're waiting on the platform. When the subway pulls up, if there's a car that seems suspiciously empty, don't go into it. There's probably a good reason why no one is in there. And for the especially germ conscious among us, you must hold on to the pole inside the car. You never know when there will be a jolt, and it can send you flying across the subway, so hold on if you have to stand while riding and just keep hand sanitizer on you. When taking the New York City subway, the map may give you options with multiple transfers. Stick to the most direct routes, taking just one subway line or limiting your route to one transfer, which means two subway lines. Two transfers, which means three or more subway lines, is usually not a good idea if you can avoid it because the subways aren't exactly precise. Subway doors open and close with just enough time for passengers to get on and off. The conductor watches, so don't dilly dally. Be ready to get on and off when you're at your stop. I think this is also one of the reasons that subways aren't exactly precise. If the schedule says your subway will be departing at 11, 11 a.m., if it arrives on the first second of the minute and everyone gets on and off within 20 seconds, then it will leave by the 25th second. If you run up to the subway at the 26th second of the minute and the doors are already closed, they will not reopen them for you, even though it still says 11, 11 on your watch. If you show up at the 50th second on the minute, you'll like you standing around wondering where the heck it is. This may sound crazy, but every New Yorker knows the experience of getting up to the platforms just as the doors have closed, and you have to wait the next one. Depending on the subway line, day, time, you could find yourself waiting to catch the next subway for just 2 minutes, 15 minutes, or anything in between. So I always aim to be at the platform at least 1 minute before the scheduled departure time, and this usually works out. Now, sometimes the subways do depart a little early, so be aware of that as well. As bad as this now makes the subway sound, it really is awesome. It may not be as precise as some of the other public transportation systems in the world, but it doesn't depend on unreliable hard traffic, so I'll take it. For other reasons, I love the subway. It operates 24-7, it gets me around the city really fast, I can multitask while I'm commuting, and occasionally there's entertainment, especially in the more touristy areas. If you're getting value out of this video so far, make sure that you're subscribed with the notification bell turned on so that you'll be ready to receive all the other fun New York City content coming to this channel. With nearly 6,000 buses, the New York City bus system is the largest municipal bus fleet in the United States, and people definitely don't take advantage of this as much as they could. Buses are an especially good option if you're traveling across town, which means east-west, or are in boroughs other than Manhattan. The reason for this is because, for the most part, the subway doesn't really run east-west in Manhattan, and subway lanes aren't as convenient geographically in the other boroughs, thus making the bus system a helpful option. Public transportation in New York City isn't free, and a lot of bus drivers will yell at you if you try to sneak onto the bus without paying. So here's a breakdown of what you can expect to pay for subways and buses here in New York City. You can load these onto an iconic MetroCard, which I currently use, but know that the MetroCard will be phased out by 2024, and the current option is really the only contact with payment system with the smartphone. A pay for ride card can be used multiple times in a row, so this can be shared among multiple people, but if you have an unlimited pass, know that when you use it, there's a timer before you'll be able to use it again. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but don't try to use this as a way to get everyone on your party on the bus for a cheaper amount, because it won't work. Also, you'll probably have an irritated bus driver yelling at you about it. Just like the subway system has local and express routes, so does the bus system. Time to found myself on express buses were surprises, which wasn't awesome since the cost of express buses is $6.75 per ride. To help you avoid this unexpected expense, I'm going to tell you how to recognize when the map is serving up a route with an express bus. Here's the difference in names for local and express buses. Local buses start with these capital letters. Notice that other than the Bronx, they're just a single letter, followed by a number that identifies a specific route, such as the M15. Express bus may start with multiple letters or a capital X based on where it runs, followed by a number that identifies the specific group, such as the QM1 for Queens Manhattan. It's cool that express buses are like coach buses, but what's really great is that they transport you a far distance in a shorter amount of time. I've taken them in the past to the Dagger Heights Christmas Life and Queens County Farm Museum, so make sure you subscribe on YouTube if you want to see what those experiences are like because videos on those will be coming to the channel this year. And heads up, express buses will be suggested in the maps just like any other bus route, so be aware of the naming system I mentioned so that you won't be surprised like I was. If you are surprised though, don't worry, you can fumble around your purse and then pay with a credit card like I did. Here's some information and the tips to help you out when riding a local bus in New York City. Sometimes the bus schedule is extremely punctual and other times it's way off. To pay the bus there, you'll either pay on the bus itself or the little station next to the bus stop where it'll spit out a ticket that you present to the driver. If you also use the sheet at your bus stop, it means that you'll insert your metric card or tap your smartphone to pay once you board the bus. And seriously, don't try to sneak on the bus without paying the bus there. On that same note, don't piss off the bus drivers. From my experience, 
handful of them are nice. Most of them are just doing their job and some of them are crappy. Watch out for the grumpy ones. They can really rattle you. When you hear that your stop is up next, be sure to tap on the thin yellow string that runs along the windows of the bus. Otherwise, the driver might not stop. The bus system runs 24 seven, but obviously make safe choices. Are we connected on Instagram? If not, follow me at hop.media for more frequent New York City content. The New York City Ferry is a fun way to get around the city, and I didn't even know about it until moving here. It won't get you to nearly as many places as a subway can, but there are a handful of routes, and if it works out to connect two of your destinations, great. But if you ask me, it's fun enough to be an activity all on its own, because you're literally riding a boat around New York City. So I did it as an activity and made a whole video about it. My YouTube video says $2.75 was the cost because I filmed it before the cost increased, but the ride still only cost $4, which is way cheaper than other experiences on the water in New York. Although the Staten Island Ferry is not the only way to get to Staten Island, it is probably the most popular choice. In fact, it is a well-loved free, yes, free activity loved by locals and tourists alike. I mean, you don't even need to have plans on Staten Island for this to be a good experience. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy a ride on the water and catch views of the Statue of Liberty on your ride. Obviously, walking is the cheapest way to get around the city because it's literally free, and perhaps there's even an added benefit since physical activity is good for our bodies. Sometimes it's also the most convenient option because walking will get you places that the subway and buses don't run or stop. But even if you plan to rely on wheels and rails your whole time here, you're still going to need to be wearing quality walking shoes because there will always be the walk to and from those transportation options and usually stairs if you're taking the subway. The glamorous shots of people and heels on the street that you see online are literally just photo shoots. Walk around the city for just one day, or not even that, observing people's feet, and it won't take you long to realize that everyone is in some kind of walking shoe, whether it's a sneaker, a lower no heel boot, or flats. Obviously, for foot health, opt for a more supportive option, but also know that comfort doesn't have to sacrifice style. New York City is the land of fashion, after all. I partial to platform shoes because of the extra support. One pair that I live in these days is my Jaden Doc Martens, which are also a great gender neutral option to go with so many outfits, so I'm definitely recommending it to anyone watching. Which transportation option is or would be your favorite? Comment down below to let me know what it would be, and also tell me where are you going on this transportation option here in New York City. To support my work on this channel please go ahead and subscribe and turn on notifications and like this video to get almost to the end and join me on instagram for daily content thank you so much for watching i can't wait to see you hopefully here in new york but if not else in the next video see ya